Hi everyone, Coach Dustin here from KC Crease. Hope you're all doing fantastic. Some of the most fundamentally important things for goaltenders to understand are what net space is available to the shooter, what net space the goaltender is occupying, and how those things can change based upon a goaltender's save selection. Hopefully today's video gives you more insight on that topic and can help you position yourself better for the next shot. In our video we have William, the goalie for the KU hockey team, and we're going through a simple progression where he is visualizing an attacker coming down mid-ice, center ice, and that attacker is going to hypothetically pass to our shooter here, who will then take a shot on net. Let's watch it at half speed and see what happens. So we watch it one more time. William sees the pass across. He locates the puck, slides over, and gets beaten high over the shoulders. So what can we learn from this? Well, if we roll the play forward just a little bit, first thing we need to do is find our point of release. This allows us to understand what the shooter has available to them. Now, our camera is not solely behind the puck here, so our perspective will be off slightly, but this will still give you an idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. So that's the net. The blue line represents the space that is actually available to the shooter based on William's positioning. So this is the actual space that the puck can go in. Anything outside of this based on William's positioning will not be a shot or anything to worry about. So let's roll the play forward and see what happens again. As we can see, the puck goes in just underneath our crossbar, so really a great placement for the puck and pass William right past the shoulder into the net. Want to zone in on that right about here, that puck. We get all this other stuff out of the way. That's our puck scoring. So when I was watching the film initially, I saw an interesting thing. Will has his eyes on the puck, shifts over, and at this point the puck has been released. We can see our puck located right here off the blade. And we can also see that the cuff or the backhand of William's glove is covering a portion of the spot where the puck ultimately goes in. And as we inch the frames forward here, we can see that Will's got a save there and a clean pocket catch right there, a cuff save there, and then no save here. Now, I'm not going to fault William for electing to drop into his butterfly. That's his save selection. That's his right as a goaltender to choose what he thinks is most efficient. And he could have got a shoulder on it or an arm. Chicken wing is what some people call that save. What I want everyone to take away from this is just the relationship between what's covered and what's not covered based on a save selection. At this point, again, it's a perfect save right in the pocket, easy catch. Will is elected to drop, and by doing so, he drops his hands, but has not gotten his arm in that space, thus creating space that wasn't there for the shooter. The same thing can be applied to T-pushes, to shuffling when you're in your butterfly, to a C-cut. Everything in goaltending is a trade-off. You're gaining an advantage in one space and giving up an advantage in another space. So it's definitely important that you understand that while you may be occupying a space now, you may not be occupying that as you drop, but you may reoccupy that same space once you get set into your butterfly or that particular save selection. I think by now everyone's seen the photos or videos of goalies using an, a tablet of some sort, a, a camera, where they take pictures at different spaces throughout the crease to see what net space they're occupying. If you haven't done that yet, please do so. I've done posts on that in the past. Just scroll through. You'll see the different photos and boxes and box illustrations, box control. Um, but it's also important that goalies go through that same simulation standing while in butterfly, but on the drop as well. Because we do drop to make saves, and there is a quick moment or two where we're in transition from a standing to a dropping or a skating to a set where there are holes open that we might not be accounting for. I hope that you found this helpful. As always, if you have questions, feel free to leave them below 
or you can email me at caseycrease at gmail.com. Don't forget to check out and follow Casey Crease on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the crease.